Hey guys, Josh Nick here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you some advanced mixing techniques. I'm gonna be covering a couple of things today, including drop swaps, double drops, changing BPMs, using effects, and a lot more. I'll start out with some double drops. Um, before I actually go into showing you the double drop, I'm actually gonna explain firstly, kind of my reasoning behind why I choose certain songs and why I believe some go together. So if you take these two songs, for example, the first song here, That's a constant like won't, 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 won't. Whereas this song, that song has like a constant like that's a really bad impression, but basically I choose songs that kind of complement each other. So one's got a constant womp, 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 and the other one's got a constant, like constant held note. If I've got two songs both kind of doing their own womp, womp, and they're kind of like not in the same, I guess, rhythm, then they're just gonna sound messy and all over the place. So this is one example I'll show you, and then I'll show you another example of two songs which actually have, I guess, the same pattern and actually complement each other in another way as well. So if I just get these two songs loaded up. Anyways, you get the idea. One other song I'll show you, which I, or a combination which I believe actually works really well. These two songs. So, taking a look at the first song. The main bass is just a constant. Like that's kind of the rhythm. This song as well. Both have that same womp, 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 womp sort of rhythm going. So if we go and say double drop these two, for example, you'll see how they kind of work really well together as well. Now, just before we get ahead, this is a, uh, I wouldn't say it's really difficult, it's only an extra step, but it is something that I've added um, to just make this double drop a little bit more interesting. Now, at this point in time in both songs, uh, basically we're reaching the second half of the drop, or second part. Now, if you notice on this song, uh, Angel Style, this is what the uh, second part of the drop sounds like. <laughs> Whereas with the other track, the second part sounds like this. It's just kind of like the same thing. It's not, to, to me, I feel like it needs to be changed up a bit more because Angel Style introduces this like really distorted, like ring, like that high pitch kind of. However, in this track, I've actually got a cue point set um, right here because this part of the song changes it up and sounds like this. They're both kind of the same pitch. So I thought what I would do with this track, put a cue point there so then when it comes to that point where it changes to the second half of the drop, I can hit a cue point and then bring that in and double drop it from there and have those two sounds kind of complement each other as well. So I'm just gonna take a few steps back and just kind of show you exactly what I mean so you know why I've done this.
there, you can see it just a little change up rather than just letting the, the, the drop continue to play out. If you just change it up and maybe skip ahead to another drop or another part of the drop, you can make that double drop sound so much more interesting. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna teach you a couple of different ways of being able to, I guess, transition out of one BPM into another. Let's just say, for instance, you're mixing out of a bass house track into dubstep and you're wanting to change things up, whether the guy before you is playing bass house or if you've just been playing bass house and you wanna move up to, you know, to a different genre. This is a little bit more of a complex way of doing it. It's not so complex once you've done it a few times, but for the newcomers who haven't mixed like this before, it might be a bit too much, too many different things going on. All you need to do um, to say, set yourself up to move from this track to here, put sync on this one here, because this is gonna be this, well, I guess we're gonna be moving the tempo up on this track and it's gonna be matching this track here. And you wanna make sure that the master tempo or master beat sync is on the track that you're mixing into. First of all, make sure that BPM matches this. And what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna start mixing in uh, from the buildup of Vibin. And then on the drop vocals, I'm actually gonna loop them. And then as they loop, start bringing it up from where the buildup starts at this point here. And then as I'm bringing it up, I'm gonna be bringing the tempo up as well as hitting this button here to basically uh, shorten the loop and make it go faster and faster until we're ready and then we can snap it out and drop it into some dumpster. Anyways, I'll demonstrate it for you. If you get a bit confused, just go back and watch the video again. So if you saw what I just did there, essentially what the sync is doing is just making sure this matches up with this beat grid here. This doesn't need to be in sync because this is gonna be the master tempo which is controlling how fast everything's going and this is gonna match up with this. Um, this is the only time I would ever actually use sync to be honest is when you're doing things like tempo changes because realistically to, to be able to move these at the same speed and kind of get them in line with each other perfectly it's not the easiest thing in the world. This just basically makes sure that you're not gonna stuff it up and it's all good. I'll do uh, the opposite here, just to kind of make things a little bit easier. This is more of a cheating method. I don't personally like doing this. I'll only do it last minute if I've kind of ran out of time to work out how I'm gonna mix it in or if it's just a very last minute transition from one track to the other. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but you know, it's better, you're better off doing this method rather than just I don't know, I've seen people just hit the vinyl speed adjust to the max and hit stop on one track and it winds down, the other one st starts and it winds up. It just This is the cleanest way to do it if you're running out of time. I'll show you what I'm doing as I'm going along here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have reverb on channel one, which is the one I'm playing on. And on the last four beats of the drop, I'm gonna start bringing up the wet on the reverb. And then as the drop finishes, hit play on this and pull down that fader to give the reverb tail a bit of a transition. You'll see in a second. Personally, don't do this like with every transition. It just doesn't sound good, but it is something that you can do in an emergency if you've run out of time and you really need to do a quick transition. Maybe the track's actually reaching the end of it and you haven't got that second song loaded. You can even do that with a dubstep track. It doesn't actually have to be something of a different BPM or genre, like you can just do it with anything really. But that's kind of like the last resort mix that I would use in case that you uh, have ran out of time. Now, what I'm gonna show you here, I'm just gonna run through a couple of different effects, something that I use. Um, just be mindful of these effects, don't overuse them. If you do it when every second song, it's just gonna sound stupid when you're playing. But they can be used, you know, when used in moderation, can be used to really, you know, make the build up or, you know, you make just make your set a bit more interesting. Um, so this one here, what I'm gonna be doing is actually using Echo. And this is something a lot of DJs use on build ups for songs. Um, basically what you do, you throw the echo on, echo on 
start bringing up the wet. I usually start at about a, like an eighth, so about 50 milliseconds. And throughout the time of the build up, I slowly bring this down all the way until you hit about one. Sometimes I don't, um, but generally that makes for a really cool effect for your build ups. Another awesome thing you can do, now this is something I've used before in house music, sometimes you can use it on other genres, but I find house is generally a genre where you're going to have part in the track where this is going to be vocals before the beat or anything like that, and what I like to do is I put an echo anywhere from about 25 to 30 milliseconds, and it has this really short, delayed, almost robotic effect. <laughs> That was a little bit overkill at some points, but you can really just muck around with the echo and just have this real metallic kind of delay effect. It's what a lot of people use when making rhythm basses, is just sticking a delay on and having it around that sort of time. But yeah, it can make for something like, you know, that sounds really cool. This is for a, another cool sort of transition effect. Now, this one actually uses the pitch effect to basically gradually bring the pitch up, 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 like a riser or a pitched up vocal in a normal track and just kind of adds to that, the transition of the two tracks just kind of meshing together a lot more and just sounding a lot more fluid. DJ, come with a tune. So that vocal there is a perfect example of where we could use something like this. So what I'll do, I'll just demonstrate this for you just so you can kind of get an idea of how to use this. You can use it in almost any track. Now what you want to make sure is that you've got your wet for the track that you're planning on mixing you know, up in key have the wet on 100% and make sure it's set to zero. Because otherwise if you hit say 33% and you turn it on mid track, it's gonna sound like this. It's gonna sound stupid, right? So make sure it's at zero, make sure it's at 100% and let's see how we can do this one. So yeah, that can be used in almost any track. You just find a part that sounds cool looped. It doesn't even have to be a vocal, it could be a wub, it could be whatever. As long as it sounds good looped, and you can pitch it up, you basically got it down pat. You really can't mess this one up. Now, after showing you guys everything I've shown you today, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna have a quick mix for you and basically just show you how I use some of these techniques in a live mix. I'm not gonna go through and explain this one here. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix a few tracks and if you wanna dissect the video, go back, watch it a couple of times. Um, go through that. You should be able to pick out exactly what I'm doing here and seeing how that's sort of working really well.
ready for your final journey? you guys like the video hope you maybe learned something new today if you're a beginning dj some of this stuff may be a little bit too confusing doing too many things at once don't worry you'll get the hang of it soon i remember when i first started beat matching it took me about 
a whole day to learn. I literally practiced for about six hours. Uh, I just still remember the start the start of my practice session. Couldn't do it. Just couldn't wrap my head around it. By the end of the day, I was beat matching. I was hit. I was basically nailing it straight up. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoy the video. I'll see you back next week for the next one. Activate radio contact with the outside.